Check, 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 test, 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 test. Okay, um, why don't we go and get started? Um, so, let me know if anybody has any questions here. Um, my plan is kind of the usual. Um, so, um, uh, we'll go over the, uh, the the problem set that I just got uh, returned back here, the problem set five, maybe a bit. I don't know if I have too much to say on this one, um, but, uh, but let's go over that first. Then we'll look over the materials for this week. Um, uh, so we were looking at two chapters this week, chapter six and seven on internal and external memory. Uh, we can talk about the next assignment as well, the next assignment question. So I have an announcement about that. I should probably post that, but um, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about in particular for the next assignment here. Um, let me start. Cache me memory problems. So, um, first of all, um, I mean, I found after looking at these that um, that um, question four and five were a little bit ambiguous. Um, I didn't get any queries about this. Well, that, that's not true. I got one person asking me about the figure 5.7, and I might've been misunderstanding them at the time. So, but it, it seemed like most people figured it out. So I'm not too certain if there's an issue or not. So, so really, I mean, it was like uh, 5.7, but but you really needed to also look at the ex the corresponding example for each of these on 5.8 to get the um, specific size of the, um, of the values of the number of bits on each of those, you know, different fields for the cache to do these correctly here. So, um, so anyway, these, these are the answers I was using. Um, um, so you needed six bits for the first uh, one. Um, so if, if you have a cache that has a line size of 64 bytes, that means we need to be able to address, have 64 addresses for the offset. Um, so that implies six bits. Um, um, and um, for two and three, I came up with uh, eight, four, and seven for tag set and offset, and 14, eight, and four for tag set and um, offset um, uh, for those. Most people had those. Um, um, I, I dinged a few people because, I mean, it does, it, the, the, the order of the bits does matter. I mean, the, the tag bits have to be the most significant bits uh, when you're doing these caching schemes, followed by the set bits. And then the word offset bits have to be the least significant bits. Okay, so particularly for um, 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 the direct caching, uh, it's, it's certainly important um, that the... Uh, the, the, the tag and then the offset are in the right order, but, but even for associative, but like, like set associative, the, um, um, it's important, um, um, uh, that you, you know, that, that these are in a particular order because the, the, the logic, um, on the, on the cache and the computing system for interpreting the bit pattern for a memory address in order to, you know, look it up in the cache correctly. Um, um, uh, you know, depends on on uh, these book being broken down in a specific way. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I was expecting I was going to spend some more time on four, but uh, and four and five, but um, I mean, most people kind of had 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 those. Um, I might do one real quick, just just to make certain uh, people kind of are on the same page on on this one. So, for example, I got the dot camera set up here. So let's see if we can um, um, uh, do these correctly. So for like the first one, um,
see if that's working. There we go. So for the first one, uh, 4A, where we were using um, um, a direct mapped cache where um, we have, um, so for all these, we had uh, the, the, the word offset was actually two, right? So, so for A, we had um, a W equals two here. Uh, I'm going to share my camera just a second. Um, yeah, okay. Hopefully, you can see that. Um, so, that, that basically, you know, uh, means that one thing, you know, if you look at these addresses, we have six hexadecimal digits in these. So that means that um, since each hexadecimal digit represents four bits, um, that we've got 24 bit memory addresses here, right? So, so for all three of these, uh, the things should add up to 24 for the different fields um, for our um, um, uh, interpreting the, the cache here. Um, so, and you know to do these correctly, and like I said, I mean most people kind of pretty much we're getting all these. So um, if we have an address like one 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 for for, um, for all for all three of these, you know the, those represent a particular binary pattern. So so with uh, three zeros and one one. Um, in um, all these cases, right? So for A, um, you know, we're using um, the, the least two significant bits are gonna be giving us the offset um, to specify the particular um, um, actual value on a particular line or block that we want, right? So, um, so that's always going to be the the last thing on on um, um, all three of these. So, so, um, so, so for A, we're trying to get the um, uh, the tag slash line slash word or offset. So, you know, so in this case, you know, the two bits are being used for the the word offset. So that's just going to be a one hexadecimal. Um, and then you have to know that um, 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 the the value that we called R in the in the textbook um, is specifying the uh, number of bits that we use for the line portion. So we're using fourteen in here, right? So that's going to be the bits from here. Um, here and then and then yeah the last eight bits give us the um, um, uh, particular tag that we're using right so so anyway I mean you know to do this correctly you just had to break these all three of these down correctly and um, uh, reinterpret these as a hex number so in this case you know we, we have to, to group these four bits as a hex number so that's going to be a, um, 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 a four there um, so zero one zero zero. So that's uh, a four, uh, and you'll get the same thing for for these next four bits, and um, um, and then these next four bits here, right? And then I guess technically it's like zero four four four. Um, so we got two more bits at the front here. Um, and then you know we've got our tag is is the eight bits at front, which is one one again, uh, text decimal, right? So um, so yeah, if anybody was kind of wondering about those, I mean, it, it it just comes down to you know understanding how to interpret the the bit sizes um, and um, uh, and then break it apart and reform the things back together. So for B, where we're doing a, a direct mapping. Um, you basically only have the tag and word. Um, so on, on B, we had um, um, 
um, yeah, all, all these, we were just using the, the word or the offset of two. So that leaves the other 22 bits for the tag here. So, um, so again, we would end up with the, the one, um, so we simply got a tag and a word in this case. So we, we end up with a one here. Um, and for the same reason, you know, the, these all kind of come out as fours. Um, um, for the rest of these values here for the uh, for the tag, basically. Okay. And then for C, um, So this was a, a two-way set associative cache here, um, but um, again, you know, he didn't really have to know a lot about the, like, for example, the, the details of the differences between two-way set associative versus um, um, versus just a regular associative um, uh, here. So. Um, but yeah, the, the two-way set associative is, is an example of, of kind of the uh, thing that's in between the, the, the kind of the combination of both associative and direct mapping uh, when we do that one. So um, again, in this case, you know, um, um, we're still gonna have the same two bits for the offset. Uh, so, so our tag, um, um, and set and um, um, offset word. Um, um, so we have hex one for the word. Um, the number of bits that are for the set size. Um, are going to be the next nine uh, in this case, right? So um, So again, you know, for similar reasons you get kind of similar things here, but um, um, we'll get um, um, uh, the next nine bits here. Um, so that leaves, you know, so that gives us the uh, uh, four, four, four. Um, Um, I probably have those backwards, right? So um, um, the 13 bits, then we're giving us the the, uh, the four, four, fours in here, leaving nine bits at the end here. So, so yeah, when you have nine bits at the end, that's kind of why it comes out as two, two uh, uh, here, right? So kind of shifts it down, or it's like shifting these up by one. So, so you end up with a two, two there, so. Um, and you can do similar things for the rest of them. So, um, but, um, you know, so you'd have to do that same thing for all these, um, and, but you'll get similar kind of results as long as you correctly shifted those. And um, most people kind of seem to have the basic idea on that. So. Um, Uh, let's see. And then, you know, kind of, and then there was the same problem. So I, I and, and I also, because when I started looking at this, I, I kind of reduced the points for four and five, expecting there's going to be more trouble with these. But um, anyway, uh, but yeah, it was, it was kind of the same issue for, for five as well. So I really should have mentioned um, it's, Figure four, figure five point seven, and five point eight. Um, you know, the figure and the one after that for each of these. So, in case anybody uh, was confused by those. So. But um, but yeah, if, if you understood these things and, and understood four, um, these should have mostly been um, straightforward. That you could have read these off of the figure. You know, five point eight and figure five point eleven on um, these different attributes. Although one thing, like for the um, associative cache, there's really nothing in the address 
that spe specifies the number of lines in the cache when you have a pure associative cache. So, you know, again, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get this particular value from the, um, um, uh, the address format, uh, you know, that's, that just, you know, go directly to the figure, um, the example being used in 5.11 here. Um, and then the other thing I was also, you know, um, there was a, um, a typo on six. I had a few people mention that, um, but um, I decided to go ahead and let this one go um, as it was, um, even though the question didn't make sense as it was originally given, you know, having, having a main memory of only two bytes um, was what it, what it actually said on the assignment as I passed it out. Um, although, you know, the the first question um, kind of um, should have, you know, even if, if that confused you, it um, should have kind of cleared up a bit that, that we were using a 16-bit memory. So 16-bit memory uh, apply, implies that we've got two to the 16 um, addressable um, words or addressable by, bytes in the memory here. Um, um, but yeah, anyway, I mean, if, if the, the block size is eight bytes, you know, so to, to figure out the offset, you always have to just know what the block size is or the line size is, right? So, so eight bytes means I need uh, three bits in order to be able to address one of those eight bytes um, in there. Um, and um, And yeah, I mean, given that it's a 16-bit memory, the, the total of that, so that's another important thing, you know, I kind of skipped over this for question one and two, so all three of these, you had to do something similar. So another important thing, though, is you have to determine what the total uh, 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 addressable bit um, is of the architecture, right? So, so since we have 16-bit totals, these have to add up to 16 for this particular question six here. Um, So with um, 32 lines, um, that implies that we need five bits to, to specify the, 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 the line, the, the set um, in this case here, right? Leaving eight for the tag then, so, right? Um, Okay, um, there were, I don't know, 25 or 33% of the people weren't quite getting this one quite correct. Um, so they were doing something um, that I wasn't quite certain what, what they were trying to do to figure out what the, um, uh, which line, but we had to figure out the line, you have to figure out which bits in the, these addresses specify the, uh, the, the line or the set offset. Um, so that's going to be the the, the five bits. Um, you know, so not the three least, least significant, or not the eight most significant. So the five in the middle. And for those, you know, if you just interpret that as a decimal number or whatever, um, you would um, be able to find that. Um, um, which particular line or, or set um, was being referenced here. So, you know, so that's binary, so it's a decimal three, and that's a decimal six, and three again, and then that comes up to 21 for these five bits here. So. Um, all right, so given 32, uh, lines and yeah, if you have questions, let me know. So, uh, if you have a question, let me know, or um, if not, go ahead and mute your screen and remember how to mute. 
screen mute for people here. There we go. So, um, so for um, so Mr. Chowdhury, can you either ask a question or stay muted? So, um, so given that we know that each line holds eight bytes and then we have 32 lines, you can calculate the total. Um, Mm -hmm. um, you can um, figure out the, the total uh, by some memory uh, that can be in this cache here. So it's relatively small. So, um, all right. So let's say, uh, anybody? Wanted to ask um, a particular question about um, that past problem set. Um, okay, so yeah, let's go ahead and move on. Um, but uh, you know, as usual, if you had questions later on, just email me about them or, or uh, whatever. So um, I thought, uh, yes, I'm gonna go get, get started here because um, we did have kind of two chapters of material. Um, I thought I'd talk about the materials first and then we'll go to the, um, um, see if there's any questions about the, the next problem set assignment here. Um, uh, later on, uh, although um, I think I'll mention this more than once here. So for the uh, current assignment, um, let me bring up uh, our next assignment here that we've got. Um, uh, on internal and external memory. Um, so I was looking through this one as well. And um, um, so just a note, and I'll post an announcement about this, but uh, uh, question six parts, uh, um, sorry, it's question five, parts B and C um, are, um, Um, a little bit more uh, involved than um, than I was originally thinking uh, when I was looking through these questions here. So uh, not that I said, so, so you, you know, uh, a little bit beyond the scope of this class, I would say, although, you know, if, if, um, um, if you're taking some coursework in statistics, um, um, you know, you ought to be able to, to work through these. Uh, but I'm going to make B and C more like uh, some extra credit here uh, for, for five. You should answer A, um, um, but um, um, and you can try and think about B and C, um, but uh, that probably require a little bit of um, some understanding of statistics and, and how to um, calculate um, like a combination, combinations and, and uh, do some things like that. So. Um, you have to get a relatively big expression uh, for these, um, but uh, but but yeah, I mean, even if you don't have have a, a strong a lot of depth in statistics, you might want to still kind of try and think about it, uh, even describe it in words. You know, so it's good to think about these things. Um, um, uh, but I'll come back to the the to the assignment five or assignment problem set six. Um, with some more hints uh, in a bit here. I thought I'd kind of go over the um, um, materials uh, first here. So, 
Um, yeah, maybe I'll use my notes this time. Um, so I'll go relatively quickly through the first section of chapter six. Um, so, so, so six is about internal memory devices, so some details about internal memory devices. Um, so, you know, the, the technologies that are used for, uh, in, in our last unit, you know, we, we talked that there's a major divide between what we think of as internal versus external memory. So that dividing line is basically, um, 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 so, so things that are internal to the computing system, the computing architecture are gonna be directly addressable in the, um, uh, the memory address space defined by the computer architecture, right? So they, they, there could still be several levels of internal memory, so several levels of cache down to main memory. Um, but but you know that that you know like we were just looking at for our um, previous problem set, uh, you know so so you might break apart your address field into different parts for you know different. Um, 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 fields uh, for bit patterns in order to do things like cache, support caching at different levels and things like that. Um, but, you know, that whatever number of bits you have that the computer architecture is using, that that's the, the directly addressable internal memory space defined um, by the computer architecture. So, So what we're talking about here in this chapter are the, the kinds of technologies that are used for uh, main memory um, that we normally just um, call RAM and also the, the caching technologies, right? So, um, so all of these technologies use uh, semiconductor um, technology, which is, you know, using, um, what do you call it? Um, um, the, the chip lithography, um, processes in order to etch uh, circuits and transistors and things, um, you know, very small um, onto uh, uh, chips, right? So, um, so that kind of semiconductor technology, um, I mean, is not just for building the, the, the processors. Um, um, so it um, also revolutionized, uh, tr uh, you know, transformed uh, the, the memory as well, the, the, the storage for internal memory storage, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, before semiconductor memory, there were other technologies. So um, some, some of this um, survives as a uh, terminology, you know, so, so you might hear memory referred to as core, um, although that can be a bit, uh, that, that less nowadays you'll hear core because cores now also has, the meaning of the CPU cores. Um, so, so there's kind of two different kind of common meanings of core and, and cores nowadays probably means people talking about multi-core systems, a, multi, uh, uh, a system with a CPU that has effectively multi-CPUs or multi-cores um, on a single chip, right? But anyway, uh, um, um, core can also some in some contexts refer to memory um, but this is a, a, an old archaic um, technology. So, so when computer memories were made from actual uh, magnetic donut shaped loops um, that were kind of built up into grids uh, and then by, by running uh, power uh, along two different lines where they would intersect, you can flip the, uh, the magnetic orientation you know, from pointing north to pointing south. Uh, in order to represent a bit. And, and you could also detect whether, which way it was pointing in order to read the bit back out, right? So, um, you know, so I described that, spent a little bit of time to describe that because, you know, any, any memory technology, both for internal or external memory, um, you know, it comes down to, we're using some sort of physical medium uh, to represent something that will have two states that we can then interpret as a bit, a zero or a one, when we're talking computing systems, right? Um, so, um, so, you know, for modern internal memory systems, um, um, 
use semiconductor technologies uh, to build the, uh, the, the chips, um, but they all will in, in some way will have two stable states, um, which can be interpreted as a one or a zero. Um, I mean, and to be useful, they have to be capable of being written to and read from. Um, although, you know, we've got ROM, which um, um, you pretty much like can only write to it one time. So, so you have to actually write it uh, when you manufacture the ROM, the, 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 the memory, and then thereafter it's just a read only, right? So we have varying degrees then of other types of, of readability, you know, so, so the most general um, are, are DRAM and SRAM, um, which are, are the basic technologies um, um, uh, used for um, um, what we think of as primary memory usually. So, um, so we, you know, the I mean, you should read the details, um, and you know, it's good to know about these things. So, for example. Um, uh, we, we talked about the memory hierarchy and that we've got different levels because um, um, the different kinds of memory technologies have different performance cost trade-offs, right? So this, this is telling you a little bit about some of those, you know, uh, uh, the, the, those trade-offs. Um, so um, dynamic RAM um, is basically capacitors, if you know what a capacitor is in, in electronics. Um, where you can it can store um, a charge. Uh, so whether it has a charge or not can be interpreted as the binary one or zero. Um, um, and, and most of all these things that we're talking about here are volatile. So you actually have to keep uh, power. So they have to have power to them continuously in order to um, maintain their state. And if you turn off the power, they'll, they'll lose all the memory um, uh, except for ROM. Right, it is non-volatile, but but most of these are volatile in, in this sense. Um, so in this case, for the for the DRAM, um, um, you actually have to kind of refresh it. So yeah, so uh, you have to, to to know whether it's wholly a charge or not, and, and re refresh it periodically. So. Um, Whereas um, SRAM, static RAM, um, uses digital logic gates, so a type of technology called flip-flop, um, a type of logic gate called flip-flop. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, electronic components in this course uh, later on when we get to building um, you know, the, the actual components of the, of, of the central processing unit here later. Um, So again, this doesn't really have to be refreshed quite in the same way as, as DRAM, um, but, but it is still volatile. So, so the state is stable as long as there's um, uh, uh, voltage um, um, uh, being applied to it. So. so the, the, the point is though, is that um, um, uh, DRAM um, is less expensive um, it's, because it's simpler. Um, you can make more dense things um, and, 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 and do them. Uh, so, so get more memory um, and it costs less. But um, because of the fundamental way that the, that the capacitors work for reading and writing here for the um, uh, SRAM, uh, it, it doesn't perform as fast. So it's slower than um, or sorry, DRAM is, is slower than um, um, uh, than SRAM. So for various reasons, like like the, this refreshing takes time, slows down things. Um, so yeah, I mean DRAM. Although nowadays the the we later on talk about DDR and stuff like that is more typical of what's used for. Uh, main memory but um but but uh, so, so this is kind of more of a statement uh like that was more true 10 years ago or so um uh, but, but yeah typically you use like the dram um for your your main memory rams you know so those were bigger but relatively 
slower performance, and then your caching technologies uh, down to the cache on the chip use the flip flop um, um, SRAM kinds of um, um, technology uh, because it was faster, um, but it was more expensive. So, um, So, so there are some semiconductor types of memory that there are non-volatile. Um, 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 so that's your ROMs and your programmable ROMs, right? So these are used more for special purpose kinds of things. So, I mean, most computer systems do have some ROMs. So for example, the, the bootloader, um, um, the, the, the thing that actually runs first uh, before you load your actual operating system and stuff from um, external storage. Um, um, so so that, that's known as the boot loader or the boot ROM or sometimes the boot prom. Um, so that'll have your actual post behavior, the, 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 the power on uh, self-test and the power on booting uh, logic, right? And that's kind of pretty much fixed. Um, so it'll do things like uh, look then for particular devices, and then look at particular sec sectors on the devices to load the initial um, um, bootloader for the operating system, you know. But um, but but those have to be hard coded into ROM, and those have to be non volatile, right? So you know, because because those have to always be available, um, so that even when the the computer is turned completely off and has no power, when you turn it back on again, you have that initial program to 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 um, uh, do post and to load, um, and to, to get the bootloader going for the operating system, so. And there's other kinds that are, that are kind of in between that um, 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 allow you to um, be non-volatile. So, so ROM pretty much has to be manufactured at the, um, um, uh, you know, at, at the factory. Um, um, and, and it can't be changed after you manufacture, but there's some that you can uh, get either sometimes special devices um, um, or um, you might be able to, to actually rewrite um, some kinds of proms um, just um, by, by giving you know, the right kinds of electrical signals, right? So, um, So anyway, um, you guys can read about those things. Um, um, I thought I might look at this figure of 5.4 just a little bit here. Um, Um, although, yeah, that uh, oh, the, my figure number is probably incorrect though in my notes there. So it's probably six point four. So yeah, there were some other figures talking about yeah the the uh, the, the DRAM um, which is kind of a capacitor, uh, and then the SRAM which is this flip flop um, uh, based on it here. So. Um, but um, I mean, you know, if you've never like, uh, uh, you know, added or removed memory from um, um, your computer system, um, you know, it, it's good, good to, to look at this at least once and kind of understand sort of how these work, right? So, um, let's see, what can we say about that? So, so these, these are typical, uh, uh, um, um, uh, Kinds of, of chips here, so so you know that will come in different sizes. Well, these are older, so so more modern ones are going to be a uh, bigger capacity on on a single, um, um, like like gram chip or something like that, right? Um, 
but yeah, so kind of the point of this though is that that there'll, there'll be particular kind of pin layouts. Um, so 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 these define you know how you so so how you set these particular lines. You know the CPU would control these, uh, but but you would set particular lines in order to specify a, a, an address that you want. Um, to be accessed, um, and then other lines um, will specify whether you're trying to read or write some values, right? So if you're trying to read some values, you give it an address, and the, those values will be coming out um, on these address lines. Um, so um, I can't remember exactly, but um, um, but but yeah, I won't, I won't look up the the details on these, but um, um, but yeah, some of these are for the address lines and some of these are for the control lines. Um, And this is, um, you know, a little bit of, you know, trying to give some idea of how this sorts of decoding happens on a, on a chip like a, um, um, you know, like this DRAM or, or similar kinds of things. So, um, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, this might be a good place for a break, although, um, 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 I'll just see if I can bring up one of these real quickly. So, um, just to make another kind of quick point, um, so if you look at if, if you ever if you've ever added or removed memory nowadays from a computer system, I mean they, they typically come in um, these sorts of um, configurations. Um, you know, so this is um, uh, PC four kind of memory. So the chips that we were talking about in our textbook, uh, one of these was like that that chip for the the figure six point four here. So you see, there's multiple of these stacked um, on this. Uh, so, so this basically then um, um, works as sort of like a um, uh, you know a, a card then that you can uh, add and remove more easily by hand instead of uh, these chips which kind of have to be soldered in right. So, so so typically one of those chips like we saw you'll get multiple of these, um, uh, and then there'll be a little bit of, of additional logic then in order to uh, be able to select between these multiple ones, uh, which particular one uh, you're doing a read or a write to. Um, um, anyway. But, uh, but yeah, um, and uh, Later on in the chapter, it talks a little bit. And so, so a modern uh, the, these chips here are probably using uh, the, the the DRAM and the SD RAM. Um, so th this was kind of a, a relatively uh, big improvement. Um, uh, this the sort of DDR uh, memory here uh, um, um, happened in the last you know four or five years. Um, it's given a uh, kind of a big, per, a pretty good boost in performance for typical main memory. But but these, th this technology has been used for main memory. That, that's kind of mostly replaced the um, uh, the, the DRAM that uh, was talked about, like in the first section here. Um, so and and this is typical, you know. So so you'll see. Um, 
um, um, these kinds of configurations come in, you know, uh, you know, uh, gigabyte size, uh, one, two, four, eight, sixteen. You know, so sixty four is is um, uh, these are meant to be put into servers, um, most likely. You know, so. Um, okay, so uh, I want to talk about some error correction, but um, this is this is a good place maybe for um, our first break here. So why don't we go for about five minutes to about eight ten or eight eleven here, um, and uh, and then we'll, we'll come back. So some so the the first three or four questions are on error correction for our current problem set. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that. So. All right, so let's take a quick break. Um, let's go ahead and get started again. Um, so I wanted to give a few examples of the uh, the Hamming codes. It's a couple of questions on the next problem set. Um, we're uh, dealing with with those there. So uh, I'll probably jump right to these, but um, 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 right to the Hamming codes, but, um, you know, the, 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 the whole um, kind of point of the section two here is that, um, you know, you should understand that, that the, the memory technology, memory chips, like we, like we were just talking about here, um, have a, a couple of sources of errors. Um, so, you know, hard failures and soft uh, errors, like it talks about. Um, and um, it, um, you know, it's it's th these are um, frequent enough that uh, it, it pays to put in a little bit of error detection and error correction into the uh, uh, chip logic itself. So all all uh, uh, internal memory um, technologies, pretty much, uh, will be including these kinds of error checking and error correction as part of the chip logic. Okay, so, so it's just built into the chip. Um, the main reason, so, so I mean, there are um, um, actual uh, hard failures, uh, which is, which, you know, is actual defects that happen. Um, so those can't really be corrected, right? Um, so, I mean, you know, your RAM can go bad and, and you just have to uh, replace it. Um, um, Things like that can be detected when, when um, um, there's been a hard failure uh, through different kinds of, of testing mechanisms, um, but, but you can't use um, uh, memory that's that's um, um, has one to some sort of physical defect. And there's various reasons why that can happen, All right? So, but but the error detection and correction is mostly for these kinds of soft errors. These don't happen all that frequently, but they happen frequently enough that um, it's worthwhile to have in the error detection, error correction, okay? So um, um, I don't know if, it's, if, if, if this is really completely accepted that, uh, you know, that, that uh, one of the common source is uh, things like, um, 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 you know, uh, alpha particle bombardment, um, um, you know, Probably the actual power supply problems, so, so fluctuations on the, uh, the the power across your computing system are, are more common um, um, reasons of, of soft errors that might accidentally flip a bit. Okay, but but these are um, kind of low enough in rate that um, um, you're not likely to get lots of them. So at any particular time, maybe you'll have one bit flipped. Um, um, over, you know, large number of accesses, reads and writes and things, right? So if, if you can do something that can detect a single error, a single bit flip um, and correct it, um, um, it can be well worthwhile, which is, which is what um, um, was being talked about in here, right? So, um, um, pretty much all 
technologies use the the use some version of this Hamming code, uh, and and most all of them, you know, as our textbook says here, are probably using a single error detect correction with a double error detection, right? So maybe I'll talk about that. We're mostly just talking about single error detection, single error correction here examples. Um, I think all of the, all of the problems in the problem set just use the the single error detect and correct uh, Hamming code here. Um, but, you know, as you can see, um, um, whether you're doing single, so, so they, they, they most, mostly use single error, double error detection because um, just for like an additional bit. So, so you know, this, this represents, you have to have some additional bits, the, these check bits um, um, in order to do the error detection and error correction, right? So, so that's additional overhead, you know, so, so if, if you didn't do that, you could be using that, you know, the, those flip-flops or those capacitors um, to actually hold data, right? So, so you're giving up some um, potential um, uh, storage space uh, in order to um, try and um, uh, protect from uh, too much errors occurring, right? But the but the trade off is, is generally considered worth it, right? And, and because um, there's not a whole lot of percentage increase as long as you use enough data bits, uh, so you have to use one extra check bit, for example, um, on 256 data bits uh, to go from a single error correction to a, a single error um, uh, to, to to a single error detection up to a double error detection. Right. So yeah, my understanding is, is most chips uh, are using some form of a hamming that does a single error, but can do a, a correction, but can detect two bit flips. Um, again, in practice, that's mostly more than enough, right? Because because um, for for many reads and writes, you won't have any bit flips. Um, and then if you do experience a bit flip, usually you're only gonna have one bit in any particular memory location that might have gotten um, a flip for some reason. Um, um, all right, so you should understand kind of how these, uh, these, these Hammond code work. So this is kind of a simple example of it. So like if we have four, bits of data so these are supposed to be the actual data and we want to add in error detection and error correction abilities so to do that we would need some three additional bits um, um, th these check bits right? and what you do then um, 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 is is you group your data bits um, in, into groups uh, and then you compute the check bits only on the groupings of the data bits right so the, that's what this kind of Venn diagram looking sort of thing is trying to um, illustrate, right? So you can think of these as parity bits. So, so you can use the different me mechanisms to compute this. So uh, on the chip logic, it usually uses some sort of an XOR um, circuit to do this, right? But you can think of this as parity. So an easy way to do this is that, uh, so once you've grouped these three data bits, uh, you want to make certain that um, the, the, the check bit um, or the parity bit um, that you add, that you set, uh, makes it so that you have an even number of ones, right? So since I have three bits uh, here of data, I need to, my, my check bit has to be a one for these three bits so that I have an even number of one, right? Um, or if you do exclusive or, so if you do an exclusive or of one and one, that's a zero. And then, and then if you do the exclusive or of that zero with the one, that's a one, that would be your, um, your parity bit that you put here, right? Same thing for these others. So since I have an odd number of ones, uh, this check, or sorry, since I have an even number of ones in circle B, um, this check bit should be zero. And likewise, since I have an even number of ones in circle C, this check bit should be zero, right? So notice, so, so this is the way this works then, right? So, so when you've calculated these parity bits, you, you save these extra parity bits, check bits, along, so whenever you do a write of these four bits, you're also gonna be calculating and saving the, the three parity bits in this case, right? 
So notice uh, uh, for C here, if uh, one of the bits gets flipped, when we go to read back out, so, so this bit here was flipped from a one to a zero, one of our data bits got, got was an error, was an error here. But when you read back out, you again um, calculate your check bits, right? Um, So if you did that, so, so looking at these, you would see that the, um, the, 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 you know, so looking at these three data things, you see that the check bit should have been zero, but, but when we read it back out, it came out as a one, right? Um, and, and likewise, again, we'd originally written our check bit to be zero here, uh, but when you read this back out and, and compute the check bit, um, again, I mean, this one should have been a one here, um, right, uh, to get an even number. And uh, for the, the circle C, right? um, th th this one would be okay because uh, the, none of these three bits were an error; it got flipped, right? So um, it, it would still be zero, right? But but when you when you calculate that, so you would see discrepancy, right? So you wrote back out, um, and when you originally wrote, you had a one and zero, and, and when you read it back out from the from the, the the data that you got, you calculated that this should have been a zero and this should have been a one. Right. So, um, but this one was correct. So, uh, from, from looking at those, that indicates that uh, it's this particular bit here. So, this is the only bit um, that um, um, uh, is at the intersection of these two check bits that were incorrect, right? But um, is not included in the, in the bit that was correct for our check bit calculation, right? So from that, you can detect that this was, was incorrect. And if you flip this back to a one, um, uh, you will actually correct the, uh, the error, right? And, and, and the things will be consistent again with the original stored check bit, right? Um, And before I move on, it's also worth noting though, I mean, uh, so when you read these out, you can also get an error, not on one of the data bits, but on one of the check bits itself, all right? So when that happens, so, so for example, let, let's say we have this system, but when we read it back out, we end up reading, you know, the, this, the, the check bit for here got flipped um, from one to zero, okay? So then when we go and do that, uh, we would find um, that in that case, this check bit, would still be correct, um, and this check bit would still be correct, but but this check bit here would be inconsistent. So when we read it back out, we had three ones, and the check bit should have been a one, but uh, we, we read back out a zero for here. So, so uh, in the case when only one check bit instead of two um, is a problem, um, is, is not correct, it is different from uh, your calculation on reading back out versus what was written in for the check bits. That's an indication that it wasn't um, one of the data bits that was flipped, but it was one of the, the check bits itself that was an error. So in that case, you can ignore it um, if, if only one check bit is inconsistent between the re, you know, the, the data that was written out um, and the recalculation on uh, when when we read things out of it. Um, So this 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 illustrates though um, the, the 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 basic way that that these Hami codes work here. Um, so you know you, you calculate the check bits. So when, whenever you write in data, um, you're going to be grouping these uh, bits in particular ways, and you, and you calculate the parity bits or the check bits uh, and, and write those along with the data when you write it out. And whenever you do a read, then um, you're going to recalculate the check bits. And then if you see any differences between the check bits that were written originally and the check bits that you recalculate when reading back out, uh, the pattern of the differences tells you um, if there was an error, so if there's any differences, there the, an error occurred, and then the pattern of the differences. So, like in this case, um, um, uh, if two bits were an error, um, that's going to tell you which particular one bit um, need, 
data bit was flipped um, and it needs to be flipped back to correct it, right? And if there's only one um, of the check bits um, that is different between the read and the write, uh, that, that's an indication that the error occurred on the check bit. And, um, and you know, and I guess another point to this is, I mean, this codes can only de de detect uh, with this number of check bits can only detect uh, a single error, right? So if two bits were flipped, um, I mean, it is possible then um, that you would see all three of the check bits were incorrect, in, in which case um, you can't know um, um, how to correct it, right? Um, um, So these check bits, um, um, there's a minimum uh, number of them that you need uh, because basically what we need to do, um, so, 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 so we'll see here why, why this relationship holds in a second, but what we need to do is we, we want to have enough of, of Total bits here. So K is um, um, the, the, the number of um, um, check bits that we're going to use. So we want to have enough of these, though, to be able to represent whether, um, um, so, so, so from these, we're going to be able to tell whether which of the original M data bits or K check bits uh, was the, the one that was the error, okay? So that implies the reason why this inequality holds, um, this implies that, um, you know, so for example, um, um, the, the reason why three check bits is enough for four data bits is because um, um, if I, to be able to specify which of the check bits or the data bits uh, was the one that was the error, um, I, I need to have two to the power of, um, or I need to have enough to specify, uh, you know, three, three plus four. So that there's seven possible bits between the original data bits and the original check bits uh, that could have been an error. So I've got seven. So, so, so two to the power of these, th this number of, of the, uh, the check bits uh, minus one has to be greater than the sum of my original data bits plus plus these check bits, so that I can uniquely um, um, specify um, uh, which one we need. Um, and if you don't quite understand that or didn't understand that from doing the readings here, um, it, it'll make more sense if you work through the examples for the Hamming code here, like like we'll do. So. Um, But yeah, from that, um, you can kind of get this table then um, um, where these values come from, at least for the single. This is for single error detection and correction. So, um, So the, the example, I'm going to work through this once and then maybe make up an example or two here. Um, so, so let's work through the example for the, the textbook of how this works. Um, so, so here uh, we're, we're moving up, we're using eight data bits. So, so for if we've got eight data bits and we want to do single error correction and single error detection correction, uh, we need four check bits, okay? So we need at least um, um, 12 bits uh, to do the Hamming code. Uh, to implement single error correction um, and detection, right? Um, so that's, that's why we've, we've got 12 bits here. So, so we've got our, our rate eight original digits. So that's the data that we're storing called digit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is from the least significant to the most significant digit. Um, and then our four uh, check bits that we'll call uh, check one, two, four, and eight, right? Um, So again, like that Venn diagram example, I mean, each check bit is gonna only operate on a subset. So we're gonna calculate the check bit only on a subset, right? 
of the of the data bits. Um, so, so this this kind of shows what we do here, but you can figure these out if, if you know the pattern. Um, so, for example, the check one is is the going to calculate the XOR um, on the uh, digit one, two, four, five, and seven, right? Um, the, the way this pattern works is that the check bit one, every every, every digit um, um, uh, based on the position number. So, so this is the position number. So, so this is position number one in binary. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to 12 here. But um, 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 for the check bit, uh, so notice for these check bits, uh, only one of the bits, so this will be, this is why these are powers of, of two. So this will be at uh, two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, um, two to the power of two, uh, and two to the power of three here. Um, and our check bit one is only going to be um, XORing those bit whose position numbers have a one in their position number. So that's going to be the um, um, you know, um, position three, position five, uh, position seven, position nine, uh, and position 11. Right? So that should um, Correspond here if I did it right here. I, 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 so I did position, but so it's going to be position three, which is digit one. So, so, so doing it by the digit numbers, um, uh, check bit one gets digit one, uh, digit two, um, digit four, digit five, and digit seven. Just looking at the, the first bit here, right? right. And check bit two gets uh, the ones that uh, whose position number has a one um, uh, uh, second bit here. So, um, so uh, check two is going to be getting digit one. It's going to be doing an XOR or checking uh, the combination of the digit one, um, digit three, digit four, digit six, and digit seven. All right. So that should be the same as what it was shown up here. All right. And again, you know, the, the reason why that pattern works, um, so for one thing is that this is the subset uh, like we were talking about here. So, so we have to have just a subset of some number of the actual data bits that we calculate the XOR on um, to do this error detection and error correct. And, and by doing the pattern this way, there's certain properties from um, which check bits are different that tells us exactly which one of the position numbers is the one that's an error um, um, that we'll see here then. So, um, okay, so let's talk through the example in the textbook. So let's say we've got, um, um, I'm storing this eight uh, bit uh, word, uh, uh, 00111001, right? Um, so if, if, you know, if you go back up and look at this or, or figure it out from the pattern that I was just talking about, um, you know, th this would be the calculated bit. So, so we would store, um, these eight bits at these positions, and then um, these are the calculated uh, check bits, right? So the, the check bit one is the XOR of these. Um, so since there's an odd number of ones, we end up with a one for check bit one um, in, in its digits that it's um, um, XORing together. Um, and then we got a one here, and one here, and then a zero uh, for the last one, right? Um, So um, um, this table is doing the, the, the same thing that, that we talked about for this example here. So um, if, if we store the word, you know, so, so the word that we stored was a 0011, um, 1101, 
right? So you have to look at the digits to find the word. And then, then we've got the check bits in here that we just calculated uh, interspersed in there. So check bit one was one, check bit two was, was one uh, in, in, when we stored it here. So I should be doing the right one here. So did I say the right thing? So zero, zero, one, one, what were the, uh, the, the, the word that we stored was zero, zero, one, one, um, one, zero, zero. And then these were our check bits, right? So, so the, the example is, okay, let's say when we read out, we have an error um, on digit three. So this gets uh, um, um, flipped, right? So, um, when you do that, the, the new set of check bits if, if you recalculate the check bits on, on the digits that you read out, you get these check bits, okay? So again, you can go back up, um, look at our work. So, the, so uh, you know, originally when we wrote them in, it was 1110. Uh, when we read it out with the, uh, the, the, the data bit three being flipped from an error because of an error, um, uh, the check bits come out as 1000, right? or I guess we should maybe read these in the other way. So from, um, from most significant to least significant is zero, 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 one. Okay, okay. so now um, we can see, we can detect an error, right? So, so if we compare these to the original, uh, we see that check bit one uh, was the same, but, but um, check bit eight was the same, but we had differences in check bit four uh, and two, all right? Um, so uh, the, the way that this pattern for the Hamming distance is done, the way it's done is because um, you can then take the, the, the exclusive or of the check bits um, and then this will work out to the actual um, um, the, the position number of, of the bit, um, uh, you know, on, on these position numbers, um, that is an error here, right? Um, and so, so whenever you have two differences, that means that, that when you do the XOR here, when we've got four check bits, that means you're gonna have two um, 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 values that differ. So if you do the XOR between the original check bits and our new check bits, we get zero, one, one, zero. Okay, so this represents the position number, um, position six, right? So, so this is binary six here. Uh, and position six is the digit three, which is the one that was indeed the error value here, right? Um, So, so that's how these basically work. So let, let's so let me make up a couple of other examples. So let's say that um, let's give an example of an error occurring on the, one of the check bits instead, right? So let me um, Let me switch over here. Uh, to my dot camera. Um, so let's use mostly the same example. Um, so we were writing, um, I'll use the same, we, we write the same value, okay? So, so we're writing, um, uh, Zero zero one one um, one zero zero one, um, and that gives us the, the check bits of um, the, the same uh, check bits. So so from check eight, um, uh, zero one one one, right? And let's say. Um, Then uh, so I should probably write this out um, in in the the same format by position number um, again here. So um, 
And I'll do all this by position number. So position 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Um, and uh, I'll just write in digit 8, digit 7, digit 6, digit 5, and this is tech 8, um, digit 4, digit 3, digit um, this is check four. Digit one. This is check um, two. Check one here, right? So, um, um, so when we did the the, the right, the, we, we store it as um, um, it, it was uh, it's still the same um, from our textbook so far. So zero zero one one, um, and then. Um, one zero zero one with our check bits being zero one one. Okay. So let's say let's give an example of when we read back out that um, we flip one of the check bits. Okay. So in that case, let's flip uh, check four. So when we read it back out, uh, everything you know we just have a, a one bit error. So that's all we can really detect and correct here. But we uh, uh, our check bit four gets flipped, right? So in that case, you know, so if you look at the um, um, check bits that we stored, uh, now when we read it out, we end up with the check bits of um, um, zero, zero, um, one, right? So now if you do the exclusive or of that. Um, it's going to be zero one zero zero, right? If, if you do exclusive or of, of each one of those, right? So whenever you have uh, just a single number um, that's different, when you do the exclusive or between the, the stored check bits and the read back out check bits, that's an indication of a check bit error. Okay, and again, because we um, um, only do those so that each one of these positions have um, only one of their bits set, you know, this is going to specify again the particular check bit. Um, that must have been flipped as an error. So, so this is this is binary four. So, so this is saying that that position four, which is our check bit four, um, was flipped. So in that case, you know, we don't have to do anything to correct it because it was a check bit that was flipped. Um, but that's an indication that that the data bits uh, didn't have an error, just just the check bit. Um, So hopefully that's readable. Does that um, seem big enough for people? I haven't, I haven't used the dot camera a whole lot yet in this class. Um, so I don't know, maybe we can make up one more example before we move on. Um, I mean, I, I could make up an example, maybe, you know, where we use A bigger number of bits, but yeah, I don't really want to do that because I'm going to have to figure out um, um, all the, the the pattern for the check bits and stuff. Um, um, but but yeah, from the given pattern, uh, you know, th that we did with eight bits and four check bits, um, you should be able to do the general idea. So if I gave you a like a test question um, where you know I ask you to um, write. Um, a 16 bit with a five check bits, you know, that you could come up with the pattern and um, um, uh, figure out the, the codes and things for that. Um, but um, I'll just make up one more uh, real quickly here as an example. So let's say that we write. Um, um, one one zero one zero one one zero. Okay. Um, so let's um, uh, 
get our position uh, information um, up there again. So our digit eight, digit seven, digit six, digit five. Uh, this is our tech eight. Check four, check two, check one. So digit, uh, digit three, digit two, digit one, right? So um, our digits for the right um, are, are the store. Came in as the one, one, zero, one, um, zero, one, one, zero. Um, and then um, well, I'll just use the, the excuse the information from the uh, the textbook. So um, I mean, you know, to calculate the the check bits, um, our check one bit is going to be um, using D one, D two, D four, D five, D seven as our uh, um, um, textbook talk about. So, so D1, uh, let me do it this way. So, so use D1, um, D2. If everybody spots an error, um, let me know. So these, we need to XR these all together. So D1, D2, uh, D4, D5, and D7, all right? So we've got an odd number of bits here. So we need, um, bit of one to, to, to get even parity there. Um, our check two is using bits um, one, three, four, six, seven, or digits one, three, four, six, seven. So we've got um, zero, one, zero, Our one. Um, so um, we've got an even number there. So we don't need to add another bit to even things out. So for check four, um, that's uh, two, three, four, and eight. So um, Hopefully I'll get all these right. So digit two is a one, three is a one, two, three, four, and uh, four is a zero, and uh, digit eight is a one. So um, we end up with an odd number. So we need a one for the check bit there, and our Check bit eight then uses uh, five, six, seven, eight, which was the last, uh, the most significant digit digits here. So that's uh, the one, one, zero, one, so odd number. So if I did that correctly, then we had the um, um, check bits one, zero, one, one uh, in this case, so, um, or, or one, one, zero, one going from most significant to least significant. One, one. Zero one will get stored in um, with with the data that we're trying to write there. Okay. Um, so um, let's pick a bit to flip then. So let's say. Um, Let's say our digit seven maybe gets read back out uh, incorrectly. So uh, we end up with a one, one zero, and then everything else is the same. Um, right. So we'd have to read, calculate the um, uh, check bits here. Um, I should have left myself some more room, probably. Um,
So, so the, I mean, you know, the, the, the difference was that um, um, uh, the digit seven here, um, so I can maybe find it in my previous calculation to, to see the changes if, if we want to. So digit seven was happening on check one, two, and eight. Um, To the um, this one, check one, check two, and uh, check eight. So um, in those cases, so, so, our, our, so this was the store. Um, so these will change to um, so we have an even number. So this, this um, comes out as zero for check one. Um, and we have an odd number, so this comes out as a one, check one. Um, and this will still be one, and um, then we have a zero there. Um, so in this case, um, so this is our store and, um, and uh, so 0110 um, was the check bits when we read out. So we have a difference here of um, 1011, um, which is um, um, you know, position 11, right? Um, which indeed was our, our digit, right? So no, so yeah, so um, so I should point out, um, um, and this is another reason why you need a particular number of bits here. So some some you know some of these digit positions uh, will be indicated when two bits uh, are are differ from the exclusive or, uh, but but of course um, some of these um, the ones above eight uh, will end up with three bits um, being changed, um, and, and and they will end up. Uh, in three of the calculations of the check bits, so, not like the digit seven here. So. Um, all right. Um, maybe one more quick one here. Um, so, for example, I mean, you know, we already had an example of, of what happens when a check bit um, is an error on the read back out. Um, let's say, let's show what happens if, if two bits get flipped here, right? So, let's say we read out and we have a two bit error. Um, so, I'm just going to make it. Uh, the, the same one plus maybe D8 as well. So in that case, um, Um, so we have the same differences here that I had for uh, uh, D7, and then D8 um, is used in, in C4 and C8, so I'm using two um, again. Um, but but, uh, but yeah, so that's going to cause a change um, on here and on here when we do our calculation. So, so our read with our two errors here. Um, so we have the same case for that one, um, the same case for that one. I oh, know. Um, yeah, same case for that one. Um, but um, our, our C4 is going to change here. Um, so we, we had two ones. So the um, Parity bit is zero in this case, um, and C4 
two eight um, now has two zeros and a one. So it needs to go back to a one here, right? Um, so in that case, what do we get? One, one, zero, one. And um, this is one, zero, one, zero. Um, so what's that position seven? So I might have, I might have messed that up. So um, so with two bit flips. Um, Um, we get um, uh, digit four being indicated as error here, um, you know, which is position seven. Uh, does that make sense? So I, that, that's, I mean, that's probably right. Um, so, so the, 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 the problem with that, uh, I, I might have made a mistake on that, but um, the problem is, is that uh, yeah, so, so the Hamming code doesn't work um, if you have. Uh, more than one um, uh, error occur, right? So I can't really detect that. So, so in this case, so, so what will happen is you will normally get a um, 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 incorrect result. So, so it'll, it'll think something else um, was uh, in error um, um, when, when instead we had uh, two errors occurring uh, in this example, so. Um, Yeah, so that that's that's the expected thing. Um, uh, if you have two bit flips, is you just get the wrong result, right? So it'll look like you had an error on a digit that didn't have an error, um, and uh, you won't, you know, you can't detect um, when you have you know two errors, two bit flips that occur. So. Um, So that um, allows me maybe to segue then to, so, so what do you do for the, if you want to detect two errors, right? Um, so a simple thing um, uh, is shown um, uh, here also in our textbook. So, so the basic idea is, um, so, so you do need, you know, you need more bits if you want to detect more errors. Um, so if you add a single bit, you can uh, increase it so that you can catch uh, a two-bit error. So, so in the example that I just did, um, um, it would work similar to this example that was shown here. Um, so what would happen is, um, 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 so if we add an extra bit, so, so the extra bit, what you do, um, uh, so, so you use the, the three bits like we did before, for the parity for some groupings, but then you add an extra bit that's gonna be a parity for all the bits on the diagram. So since um, um, after we calculate the parity bits, um, we have three bits. So we need, um, so our extra bit for doing, uh, for, for detecting if two bit flips occurred um, uh, would be set to one uh, out here to, to give overall par to give parity overall for all the, um, original seven bits that we had for the one error correction and detection, right? Um, so question? Um, so,
So yeah, in C, we've had two errors occur. So um, um, in this example, um, what? So, so we end up flipping one data bit from zero to one. Um, and um, we flip one parity bit. So, so those, these are the two errors, the, the two things that got flipped um, on, on step C here. Um, so yeah, now if you're to recalculate um, and, and, and correct uh, like we did originally, um, you would see that, so, so looking at this, uh, this uh, uh, bit is, check bit is incorrect. So, so, so go back and do the same thing for one error detection and correction as a first step here for the two error detection. So um, you would see that, um, you know, since these are all zero, that should have been a zero to be even. Um, and um, um, since we had the, the yeah, one, one here, that should have been a one um, after we did these two bit flips. So that would indicate um, that it was actually this bit that was an error, but remember that wasn't the one that was an error, it was, it was these, these other two, right? So if we correct that back to a one, and that's where the, the extra bit comes in. So, so then as a final thing, uh, in order to try to detect a two bit flip error, so, so then you go back after you correct um, and, and, and use this. And if there was a two bit error, um, now this overall parity won't be correct anymore. But, and so we have an even number ones. So this should have been a zero if that uh, error, if there was only a one bit error and that error correction worked correctly. Um, but, um, um, but, but yeah, so it's inconsistent. So, so in this case, you know, um, 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 we, we won't we won't know which two bits were an error from this particular code, but at least we can detect um, that it was a two bit. You know, so the the previous example that I did, um, you wouldn't know that you incorrectly um, fixed the wrong bit when there was a two bit error. So, so here at least um, you, you would know that um, um, there was more than one bit uh, error that occurred. So, so my result was incorrect for this read back out here. So, um, okay. Does anybody want to ask uh, any questions? So that was that was a quite a bit of time on on the hammock. So that should help you with the first three or four questions on the problem set. Um, the current one here. Um, so, um, let me see. So, so the rest of the things are, are some, some more discussion about some memory technologies. So I already mentioned DDR. Um, so, so this is kind of a, a recent uh, technology. Um, which has mostly kind of replaced the old old DRAM for, for um, main memory. So DDR and, and synchronous um, um, DRAM here. Um, And I mean, flash memory is basically, you know, uh, uh, the, the technology that's used in you know, what we call flash drives. So, so this is um, 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 slower, but it's non-volatile. Um, um, it's a lot less expensive than um, um, than like uh, the, the EEPROM um, kind of uh, flashy non-volatile. So, so the, the, the read a little bit, uh, write a little bit and read back out kinds of technology. So, 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 um, uh, so this has become uh, pretty important as a kind of um, secondary, uh, but, but we mostly use these for a kind of external storage rather than internal storage, right? So, so you know, flash drives um, are really 
uh, an example. They're, they're more like a, uh, a drive, um, a hard drive, an external drive. So, um, same with um, solid state memory technology as well. So, so these are um, uh, relatively recent, um, um, uh, so a slightly different technology, uh, but, but these are being used um, also for external drives, external memory. So they, we talk more about these in the next chapter as well, I believe. Um, Uh, but but these are these are uh, uh, good external memories and they're faster, uh, you know, so they're better performance for the most part than the magnetic um, drive uh, technology. So that we talk about in the next chapter here. So, um, all right. Oh, this, and this is kind of a good figure to to um, so keep in mind. So this is kind of a more um, uh, picture of the different technologies and the memory hierarchy and kind of where they're being used. So, um, so like your flash and your, your um, uh, solid state drives are kind of down here and then the magnetic hard drives down here. Uh, and then this stuff is, is kind of the, uh, the, the BDRs, the, the original DRAMs and then the DDRs and things. All right, um, let's um, take another break um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the um, um, chapter seven here when we get back. All right, um, let's go ahead and finish up here. Um, so I'm not gonna go too much longer uh, here. Um, um, so I'll go quickly uh, say a few things about uh, the external memory um, material. Uh, and then we'll, then we'll see if there's any questions about the problem set that anybody wants to ask here after we've looked at stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to comment uh, as much uh, on here. I mean, you should understand, you know, the, the, the basics of the external memory technology. So um, again, until relatively recently, the last five years or so, I mean, magnetic disks and other sort of rotating medium, phys physical media were the primary um, um, uh, technologies used to create uh, uh, external memory devices, right? So again, th these tend to be much slower for read and write than um, uh, uh, semiconductor uh, technology, so, so RAM, uh, and things we're, we're talking about, you know, an order of magnitude or so. But but now, you know, we are seeing things that are being used as external memories that are kind of beginning to get into the gap there. So the the, the field of external memories has become much more varied um, uh, relatively recently, right? Um, with styled state drives and um, uh, flash drives and things like that. Um, so, uh, both these and like optical drives um, worked on um, a, a rotating platter. And, and this is, you know, is relatively simple, you know, so it's was, so was just a surface that could be magnetized um, um, or demagnetized. Um, and then, um, um, so you'd have a, a read write head um, that you could increase the power a bit in order to actually change the, the, um, um, small area, it, it's, it's uh, magnet, 
magnetic characteristics, right? Or at a lower volume, uh, it could be used then to detect a lower power. Um, the read write head could be used to detect uh, whether that particular spot that is currently over is is magnetized or not. So thus you get your bit, right? So for optical memory, similar idea, rotating platter, but uh, using a laser to actually um, uh, 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 write or unwrite um, uh, a bit of, of um, area on, on a reflective surface. Uh, um, Yeah, I, I mean, you know, if, if you read this, uh, hopefully most all this stuff will be pretty understandable. So, so this is typical of a magnetic drive today. Um, I mean, optical drives are mostly just used for um, um, and, and, are, and have kind of gone out of use nowadays. Um, so those are mostly used for removable media, but me magnetic disks are still used extensively, uh, primarily as, as, as a prime external memory device, right? So typically for your magnetic garage, you'll have actually multiple of these um, platters. Um, so you break these down into um, um, some, um, cylinders from the inner to the outer um, are, are also called uh, tracks. Um, and then the tracks are further subdivided into sectors, right? Um, and then simply by rotating this and then the, the, the read write head can be moved in or out so you can rotate over a particular track. And then you have to wait for the track to rotate under uh, the, the sector to rotate under once you have the read write head positioned on the right track uh, to get to the to the, the 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 sector that you want to read or write from right and then as it's rotating under um, you actually you know. By, by setting the, the, the voltage on your read write head can, can either write some data, you know, change the data to write some data uh, onto that sector as it's passing under while it's rotating or read it back out if you're doing a read operation. So, um, one thing um, um, you should maybe know is that, I mean, in theory you could possibly, oh, it's, these are these platters are double-sided typically. So, so there'll be a read write head on both the top and the bottom. These platters, and there'll be multiple of these um, in a typical magnetic hard drive. But one thing that, that people um, often get wrong is that um, it turns out that it, it's, it makes the devices much more complicated to have these read write heads be all independent. So, in theory, these could all be a, at different tracks and sectors if they could operate independently. But, but, but that tends to be much more complex and much more expensive to implement. Uh, hard drive that way. So, so mostly these read write heads for all of the platters uh, are going to be positioned over the same um, um, track, right? So, so they all move uh, in and out in lockstep. Um, so, so you can't position these independently on different tracks for the different platters. Um, All right, and and um, so the, the last three or so questions um, on this problem set um, kind of ask you to compute some of these things. I don't, I don't think that this stuff is too complicated. So when we ask to to, to calculate, you know, how long it'll take take to, to read out some data or what the what the um, effective uh, transfer rate might be. All right, so, so you have to take into account um, a couple of different things. You have to take into account um, how long it takes to seek. Now, so, so given that the read head is a, a particular um, track, um, I have to wait some amount of time. If I'm not on the right track that I want to read um, a sector from, I might have to seek in or out, right? So that's the seek time. Once you're positioned over the track, then you're gonna have to wait for the um, platter to rotate underneath your read write head. So that's the um, uh, track latency, TL. Uh, and then transfer time. So, so once once you're at the right track and once you've rotated the sector underneath your read write head that you want to read or write from, um, 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 it'll take some amount of time then to uh, uh, 
transfer the data. So, so to read for, for the uh, block of, of bytes or, or write the block of bytes uh, that are on that particular sector, right? So the total access time is just a sum of those depending on you know, where you originally are, uh, you know, that, so you had to seek and then, and then wait some latency for the rotation to get under and then actually transfer the data. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, yeah, so there's other relationships or equations you can have in here, you know, so you know, how fast that that disk rotates um, will affect, you know, the, 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 the transfer time um, that, that you will be able to achieve things like that. Um, I'll just mention one or two things about RAID here. Um, uh, so, so RAID is primarily used for two different reasons for external, mostly for, for external magnetic uh, drives, external magnetic memory. So RAID can be used to increase performance or RAID can be used to um, increase redundancy um, and you can actually do both at the same time for different kinds of RAID configurations um, to, to some extent, right? So there are some RAID configurations that are only for performance. So, so, so how can RAID affect performance? So if I go back to what I was talking about, um, I'm sorry to, to go back all the way back up here. So, um, you know, again, in theory, for, for a single drive like this, uh, if, if I could do these independently, uh, I could also be reading and writing in parallel, but, but typically we don't do that on a single drive. These are all fixed. So, so these are all, you can only be reading or writing from one platter, from, from one of these read or write heads at any given time, even though I've got multiple platters and I, and I can, I've, I've got data on both the top and the bottom of the platter, right? But uh, even though I can only be reading from one sector at a time over all these platters and all these tracks, um, if I have two drives, um, in theory, you know, I could be uh, reading data on one of those drives and reading data or writing data on the other drive, uh, pretty much in parallel, right? Um, and that's where RAID, um, uh, was it RAID? Um, or the, the, I have to remember the level here, but um, um, so, so the, some of the things about parallel access um, um, are the things I was just talking about here. So, um, so like RAID 2 is all about um, performance. Um, um, uh, so in that case, there's no redundancy. Um, or am I describing RAID zero here? So you have to read through those. So. Um, and, then, and then the other thing that RAID can be used for is, is increasing reliability, right? So the easiest to understand is the mirroring, the RAID one, right? So in that case, what you do basically is like, if I have two hard drives and they're of the same size, I write the same data both to hard drive one and hard drive two, right? So it's mirrored, right? And then when I read it back off, um, you know, or if, if one drive fails, you know, I've, I've, I've got the other drive. So, so you know, the, this, this mirroring RAID one protects against um, a single hard drive failure. And then, you know, I can, I can replace that hard drive um, and then I can rebuild the RAID one by basically copying all the data from the good one onto the new replacement drive to build my my RAID mirror back up. Um, and then there's others that, that use striping um, to get um, um, a, a different kinds of redundancy and things. So. Um, Uh, 
All right, so that's mostly kind of some of the things I wanted to point out about the external memory. Um, let's see, so um, let's go back to the assignment. So like the first three or four questions um, are about uh, error correction to detection. So we kind of covered that pretty well, I think. Um, I mentioned before, so I mentioned a second time. Um, so I guess, yeah, the last three questions are about um, I think six and seven um, um, should be relatively straightforward, I hope. So, so these are asking you to calculate things like uh, seek time and uh, latency um, uh, and things like that from these described characteristics. Okay. Um, so, so question five is the hardest, but um, I'm basically going to make, uh, um, I already announced and, and I'll, 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 I'll make a written announcement on this. Um, just think of B and C as, as more of like um, um, uh, bonus questions here. Um, so the, these will require a little bit of background statistics to get like a, a, um, a complete um, expression for these, uh, but, but do do A. Um, so you ought to at least be able to describe, uh, if you think about it deeply enough, um, what the probability is of, of the, um, Of, of seeks of different lengths are, all right? So um, um, for this one, kind of real quickly for part A here, um, a couple of things to make that more concrete. Um, So, you know, consider a disk with, with n tracks numbered from zero to, to n minus one. So, so again, you know, uh, uh, this was the, the figure that I was just looking at. So, so we've got some number of tracks from, you know, the inner to the outer, right? So we're talking about just um, um, the, the, the seek time here. Um, or actually the, the length of the seek. So, so how many tracks you have to go over to, to, to seek, right? So, so, so the basic idea is, is you can think of the, the tracks, let, let's say we have uh, four tracks. So, so they're numbered like zero, one, two, three, oh, let's, let's do five, so we have four tracks. So again, uh, so these are my tracks. So, so these would be, you know, uh, on my, my circular media, so, so track zero, or probably, probably I think normally we, we number from the inner to the outer. So I probably did it backwards here, but, uh, but, but yeah, so, so, so think of my tracks zero, one, two, three. Um, four here, right? Um, so kind of what you're given on problem five is that, um, or, or what you should understand is that um, for any request, I mean, I'm equally likely to need any particular track, okay? So if I'm currently on track zero, um, so, so I'm concernedly currently uh, position T at zero, I'm equally likely going to need to do a seek to any of the other tracks, okay? So, so I've got a one in five chance of needing to, to seek to track zero still, right? Um, so that has a seek length of zero. Um, So that 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 so for a j of zero, uh, so, so for this problem it says use j for the um, the seek length. So so if I'm on zero and I need to seek to zero, that that's a j of zero. That's a j of one to go from zero to one, and so on. J of two, seek length of two, seek length of three, seek length of four, right? Um, but um, uh, e any of these is equally likely okay so so you know i've got a one in uh, one in five chance of needing to to do a sync length of zero one in five chance of sync length of one one in five chance of sync length of two so on right so these all end up being equal probability right but um um so you can think of it though I'm on the second track, so this is a little bit different, right? If, if you're positioned differently. So you'd get the same kind of pattern if I'm on the other extreme, 
right? I'd have a one in, in one in five chance of, of, of any of the sequelings. But here, um, um, when I'm anywhere else besides an extreme, um, um, you know, I, the, my maximum seek length if I'm right in the middle is just a, a two. So I can go zero, one, or two, right? And I still have a one in five chance of going zero, but I have a two in five of going one or two, right? Because I got two ways that I can go. Uh, they have to seek one track away. So I either go uh, down to, to one or up to three. So anyway, that, that's that's what's being asked on question five there. Um, Okay. Um, anybody want to ask uh, anything about the problem set or other questions here? Um, okay, so um, I'll just also kind of give a quick reminder here before I uh, uh, stop the session. Um, so we are getting close to our first midterm test, so you might want to start thinking about that, although um, uh, we do still have one more uh, week here, so we are going to be covering the um, uh, input-output um, chapter, so that's back to a single chapter, I think. Um, oh no, um, so yeah, we'll be looking at input output and the operating system support. Um, so two chapters again uh, uh, next week. So, um, and then after that, um, uh, we'll have a week devoted to our first exam here, so. All right, last chance for questions. Um, all right, if not, then um, I'll go ahead and end the session. I'll get this uh, video posted then. So I've had a, a few questions about, uh, well, last time about the, the previous problem set. So keep sending questions by email. Um, the, um, you know, um, uh, we are, I am doing the, the sessions in the classroom here. So, you know, if anybody needs face-to-face -face time for these, um, you know, let me know come off to the classroom. So I've been coming to these uh, recently. Um, uh, if anybody people, if anybody wants to meet, um, talk about things. So. All right, um, so that's it for today and I'll see you guys later then.